also important um, when we look at some of those original drivers, at least in the political commentary, um, it was a concern um, around too many students into some of the metropolitan group of eight, particularly coming from a particular source country, as well as rapid growth post COVID into VET more generally with concerns around potential compliance there. Um, now, I fear that the, both the ESOS amendments and the subsequent politicking um, has tried to solve far too many issues using very blunt tools. Um, and I would argue that private higher ed in particular, or to rephrase that, smaller niche higher ed have, have got over, they've been overlooked. So as the, the various politics has been at the top end of town and, and around some of the quality concerns, I fear that, that the, those allocations, particularly around CAPS, particularly around as Mark references, the business models and how private higher ed operates have been lost in the middle. Um, and equally, uh, many of those providers um, have already been suffering over the last 12 months as an impact of both Ministerial Direction 106, 107, high visa refusal rates, um, vet changes in, in market. Um, and the confidence in Australia, and we'll come on to this, Kim, later, by students, agents, parents, is, is diminishing by the day. And I think the, the fact that we're, again, speaking about this topic, um, many months on from when we kicked it off, um, is a disservice to, to all of those who have been looking to Australia. Um, but Kim, back to the question, and I will reference the, the robo caps, um, because it is clear for, for where the uh, where I'm particularly focused, um, it has been an Excel crude spreadsheet that has derived the 2025 um, indicative allocations. Um, and in private higher ed, that has been based off a baseline of 2023, um, except for a very small set of providers who had zero in 2023 when it was 2024. Um, now, what that the impact of that, Kim, that 2023 was not an effective baseline. We still had concurrent COEs um, and some major loopholes to legislation from previous government in the first half of the year. Um, so I contend, as do many others, that inappropriate behaviours by providers, et cetera, um, led to high numbers of students um, in some providers, not necessarily following quality and integrity, um, and for those providers who were focused on student experience and quality, um, their 2023 numbers were much lower than they would have otherwise been. Um, and to Claire's point, while VET um, had a specific methodology to recognize new providers, um, and public higher ed had special methodology to recognize those who had dramatic changes between 2019 and 2023, there was no such consideration for private higher ed. It was a direct line. Um, the outcome of that, Kim, is many providers have had allocations of a fraction of their um, previously approved CRICOS, a fraction of their historic numbers. Um, and as Mark references, allocations of 10, 20, 30, 40, that frankly is simply unviable. Um, and there are equally providers, and there were a couple of exceptional ones, again, on day four of the Senate hearing. Um, obviously, Dr. Chandra from Institute of Engineering Education, a brand new provider in Adelaide. So again, in the regions, doing courses relevant to AUKUS. So very significantly national, who had an allocation of 10 new students. Um, and then if we go to our nation's capital, obviously, very eloquent John D. Margariti, um, who had two institutions who had a collective um, allocation of, of two across two institutions. Um, and our, my final point on this, Kim, I think, again, if we go back to the start of this sorry tale back in May, um, we were promised through the, um, the press releases, through the statements to industry, to the broader public, that the concerns here were accommodation. The concerns here was concentration of students in major metropolitan um, locations. Um, 
equally quality and integrity, um, uh, misallocation into the regions, um, which in Australia is basically outside of our three big cities on the eastern seaboard, um, and skill shortages. And absolutely none of these have made it into the Excel methodology for 2025. Um, and Kim, this will stifle innovation. Um, private higher education providers are already shutting down campuses. Some will close entirely over, ne- over the coming months. Um, and that is at the very time they have students already enrolled well through their programs. They have students intending to enroll in the first couple of months of 2025. Um, and it's an absolute um, disservice to them. Um, and the whole way this has spun out is is really, really poor. Thanks, Neil.